Hi, this is David from Electric Teaching, and this is a remake of part four of my Star Catcher. The previous video just did not have the clarity I was hoping for. It was in one of my first videos. And so I wanted to redo this so that the next viewers don't have to squint their eyes trying to figure it out or solely listen to the things that I'm saying. So we're making a Python game here. I've got a background, and I'm using Pygame to create the window. And you can see I've got a star, a little star bouncing around. This game is made so that uh, you could translate this to any other type of theme, just as long as it's got uh, objects bouncing around and uh, a player, which we're going to add right now, um, that is on the screen that you can move around in the interaction between the player and the object. Later, you can manipulate the way you feel. Um, let's see. I want to first add a transform line. I have a transform line on the target right here, but my background just does not look the way it's supposed to. So I'm going to copy that transform line since I know it's working nicely. I'm going to go below where I load the background and paste it in. So I've loaded the background at this line, loading a bg.jpg or jpg. Let's see, we need to, I'm going to copy the word background here. And now I'm going to paste it over there and paste it over the word target in both places. So I pasted over both the words targets, but I don't want to make it a background that's only 20, excuse me, that's only 20 by 20. I want the size of it to be the same size as the screen, no matter what I decide the screen to be. I'm using these variables to make sure that I can be, can, I can only, I only have to change the values up here and everything still works perfectly because I'm basing it off the variables instead of just always typing in numbers. Um, let's see, uh, now the background should be working okay. I won't test that right now. I want to jump into the player. Um, if you haven't done so, make sure you have another object as a player object. Uh, like I said before, the theme can be anything you want. I'm choosing space stars and spaceships. Uh, it could be a field with bunnies and a farmer trying to collect them. It doesn't matter. So what you need to do is just find the images that work for the idea that you're trying to do. And what we're going to do is I'm going to use uh, my image as a spaceship, and I'm going to load that up, my spaceship, and it is a PNG as well. So let me get back to my code here. And it's pretty much the same way I've loaded up the target. In fact, I'm going to write and player. I'm going to be loading up the target and player when I write the comment. And let's see. I want to do pretty much, like I said, the same thing. We're going to have a player. I'm going to use the variable player. And just so you know what I'm following, I'm following the lines above up here. And I'm just kind of copying off myself right now. Pygame.image, pygame.image, load. I am loading up the image. My spaceship.png. The PNG makes it so I can make a transparent image. And it always works better if you're good with Photoshop, then that should be something you can do easily. Um, let's see, we want to transform it. We want to transform it and make it a specific size. Um, this is a long line. I think I'm going to copy it. I'm going to copy that line. Uh, again, I want to emphasize that sometimes copying and pasting is not the lazy approach. It is to ensure a perfect typed up instruction. And all I have to do is change the two words here, the target words to the player words. I also don't want it to be 20. I want it to be 30. I want it to be 30. I'm going to make it slightly bigger than the stars. Stars. I am going to make multiple stars down the road. All right. And then the next line. Uh, instead of doing the get rect, which is using the size of the object, which we made 20 by 20, and then placing it in by, at the target position based on the size, I'm going to do it another way because we're going to be changing these values. We're going to be making um, px, comma, py as the player positions, the player positions. And I want to start it in the middle of the screen since we're using variables. It is half the width for the x and half the height. Half the width and half the height. Of course, I have to blit it. Screen, the, the in case you have multiple screens going on, and I can imagine games you do, they, you, you're identifying this word screen as the one that we have loaded up up here. So screen dot blit parentheses. Let's see, I'm blitting the player image where 
parentheses px comma py, the variables I used before. Again, using these variables, don't forget to close the extra parentheses there. Using these variables um, will help me manipulate it and make, make me be able to move it with keyboard actions in just a little bit here. Um, if I only blit it once up here, when it runs the loop and it basically clears the background by overlapping the images, the blit here and the target, then the reality is, is that I will not see, I will not see um, the actual um, uh, player because it's going to blit to the screen and milliseconds later be overlapped. So we need that blit down here as well. So I'm going to grab the screen blit, copy it, put it down here. I'm going to blit it right after I've blit it, blit, I don't know how to use that word, blitted or I've blit the other objects. Um, please forgive me, I am redoing this and I noticed this uh, target move IP is in a slightly different position just to make it comfortable so you, in case you're tracking it, I'm going to put it back up there where I think it was in the original part four. Let's see, I've done a lot of changes here. Let, I've transformed, I'm going to run it, transformed, <clears throat> and I've got no target blitting on the screen. Hmm, interesting. So that, oh, I know why. I know why. I copied and pasted the wrong one. I can see it down here below. Oops. Let me close this. Copied and pasted the wrong one. I wanted the player to be the one blitted. I'm sure if you were paying attention closely, you caught that and are, of course, not making the same mistake I made. Sometimes teachers say that we do that on purpose, but we're really doing it on accident. Pretend we did it on purpose. All right, we can see we've got a star bouncing around and my player's right there. Let's do, um, I think that's basically it for part four. I wanna just double check that. So give me one second here. Just wanna do a little comments to make sure that we all understand what we're doing at any given time. Right here we have our image display updates. It's also good to have the comments so that you can track down when the code gets longer what you're doing easily without reading the code but reading the comments and what you're doing in each section. I think that's very important when you're programming. Um, let's see down here and scroll this so you can see it. I'm coming off your screen here. But down here I just simply need to uh, put in another comment and explaining we're doing the keyboard and mouse movements here. So keyboard and mouse movements. But that is it for part four. On the next part, I'm typing and talking at the same time, sorry. On the next part, um, we are going to make the player move around with the keyboard movements. I'm David from Electric Teaching. I hope you're enjoying this.